Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Card Games That Don't Suck, in which today I'm joined by two friends to look at a three-player game, that there are variants to play online with four or five people if you've got two decks of cards. Fight the Landlord is a game about fighting landlords, and that's why I'm using my Kirby deck, because Kirby is cute, but like landlords, I think Kirby also consumes a lot more than he needs to, and needs to be put in his place. So, in a game of Fight the Landlord, you are going to deal the deck out between, oh, these cards are very slippery, <laughs> between three people. Here's a deck that I dealt out earlier. Okay, now you are going to actually stop before dealing out the last three cards of the deck. Those are gonna stay in the middle of the table. Also, before you deal out the deck, one card in the deck you're going to have turned face up. Okay, so that's gonna to go to one person. In our case, it's gone to me. Now all that means is that I'm going to start the bidding. Okay, so this is a gambling game that is all versus one person. And it starts with everybody bidding to see who gets to be that one person, the landlord, okay? Now, the landlord, if they win, everybody pays them. But if the landlord wins, they have to pay everybody else. So now also, before you start, you're going to decide on the value of one abstracted fight the landlord betting unit, okay? Now this is a gambling game. So you might say among your friends that a bet is worth one dollar, or it might be worth one gummy sweet. Mm -hmm. For our sake, we're going to make it one English pound. One in no, Ooh. I'm not too high for me. It's two ten English pence. Ten English, English, pence. <laughs> ten ten English, English pence. pence. Okay, okay, fine. You got to do this. Is whatever your friends are comfortable with. So <laughs> it's going to be ten English pence. Now, when you're bidding to be the landlord, you can bid one, two, or three, which is essentially setting a bet of ten, twenty, or thirty pence. Uh, I'm gonna come in at 10p, I'm gonna bet one. I'm cause... gonna, I'm feeling confident about my hand, I'm gonna bid two. Okay, two. 20 pence. Annie, are you going to pass or bid the maximum of three, which makes you the landlord instantly? It's tempting, I think I'll play it safe and see how it plays out and pass. Okay, you know what? I bid three. <laughs> I'm the landlord, so three is the maximum bet. When someone bets three, then uh, going clockwise around the table, they That's are it. the landlord. Now, as the landlord, you're saying you can beat everybody at the table, which is gonna be hard. So you probably only want a bit to be the landlord if you like your hand. We'll get more, we'll get to that later. It's a big hand. It's a big hand, it's massive. And yours also, just got bigger, because yeah. you, as the landlord, had to take the three cards from the middle of the table. I did, indeed. Okay, everybody around the table has put their hands in some kind of order that makes sense to them. Now, the game you're playing is a shedding game. The winner around the table is the first person to have put all of their cards face up in front of them. Once your hand is empty, you have won. The way this works in an all versus one scenario where one player is the landlord is that if the landlord puts down their cards first, they've won. But if anyone else around the table puts all of their cards down, then the entire team has won and the landlord pays everybody. So as the landlord, you're in trouble, but the one advantage you do have is that you're going to start the game. And what that means is when a player starts a particular round of, be of fight the landlord, almost said beat the landlord, which is not right. It's not what it is. That's what you taught me it was the first time. I know, and I was wrong. And I almost prefer that name. So you are going to choose what type of set of cards you want to put out. Now there's a bunch of these and they kind of resemble poker hands. I'm not going to go through them now, uh -huh. but you can look them up in the video description and you will need to have them on hand while your friends are playing their first few games of this. I mean, I could teach you now, but A, it would be hard for me and B, you wouldn't remember no, them. No. <laughs> but here's roughly how it works. So let's say I choose to put out a pair, okay? I've put down, I've discarded a pair of fours. Look at that, I'm on my way to getting rid of my whole hand. Mm. Now, this is what the other players have to put out, which means going clockwise, now it's Matt's turn to put out a pair. But here's the catch. Matt can only put down a pair if it's higher than my pair. So a pair of fives, a pair of sixes, a pair of sevens, Ooh. and all of that good stuff. There's a catch here, which is that twos in Fight the Landlord are the highest. Okay, so it goes Jack, King, Queen, Jack, Queen, King, Ace, Two. Twos are super high. Which I like. I'm gonna put down a pair of fives. Okay, he's doing it. Now nice. it's over to Annie. You're gonna put down a pair or pass. I'm gonna keep going and jump straight up to nine. I'm <sighs> really not into this. Uh, so Sorry. here's the thing. We keep going until two players pass. Once two players have passed, then it's gotten back to the last person who put down cards, like, Work with me here, guys. If I put down a pair of jacks and mm -hmm. then Matt goes, Matt, pass it? Okay. Oh, no. Pair of queens. Okay, right, fine. I'm beating the landlord. Oh, Fight the landlord. Annie, do something. Pair of kings. Uh, okay, right, well, I've completely lost control of the situation, so I'll pass back uh -huh. to Matt. Uh, pair of aces. No, I'm not gonna do that. Okay, okay, so I pass. 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 Okay, now, what this means is that because two people have passed, 
Annie was the last person to play cards, so Annie leads the next type of cards. And she could do a straight, she could do triples, she could do any of the crazy variety of types of hands you can put down in Fight the Landlord. But what you're doing is trying to put down a set that you don't think other people can follow. For example, let's say I'm leading, I put down three eights. That oh relies gosh. on then Matt being able to put down three cards that are higher than eights. Can you do it? I can't pass. Annie, can you do it? Nope. And that uh... means because they've both passed, I get to put down another kind of set. Like what happens if I put down, I don't know. You get the idea. The game keeps going this way until hopefully someone has discarded everything they have. And so really the bit at the start of the game is your confidence in being able to control the chaining win after win after win to take you over the line. That's exactly right. It is so much fun. It's incredibly tense. Now I've saved the best or last here because while someone is going to put out a type of hand and then everyone else has to follow, there are two rules that break this. And those are, how do we fight landlords, everybody? That's right, it's with rockets and bombs. There are two <laughs> kinds of hands called nice. rockets and bombs <laughs> that you can put out whatever someone has just put out. And who has the other joker? I do. Can I have it for the sake of an example? Yes. Let's imagine I had two jokers. Matt, can you lead a... a uh, yeah, sure. Um, here's a pair of aces. Pair of aces. Oh, I don't know Ooh. if I can beat that. Now we go to Annie because we're going clockwise. Can I put down the same... You no. can't. Only no. a pair of twos. You need a pair of twos to be that. To be that. Oh, she's got a pair of twos. Oh, how am I going to beat a pair of twos? There's literally nothing that can beat it. Oh wait, rockets. So rockets is if you play both jokers at the same time, and rockets is the highest hand in the game. So once you mm. put out rockets, literally no one can beat it. They both have to pass, and you get to lead the next round. But here's the cool rule: rockets are relatively uncommon, and if anyone plays rockets, you double the bet. Wow. So. That uh, that 30p we we're rolling, it just got doubled because I played rockets to 60p. Oh, so no. if the landlord loses, then they have to pay 60p to not exactly 60p in your game. Whatever you're doing. Whatever you're doing. But don't go any higher than that. I'm that ruined. Would be crazy. <laughs> so if uh, the landlord wins, then that bet is what they have to pay to everybody. Remember. Whereas if the landlord wins, then mm. everybody has to pay them that bet. Uh, there is one thing though that you can also play, which is known as a bomb. It's not as exciting as rockets. A bomb is if you play four of the same card, which again is something nice. you can play at any point that is uh, always going to be considered higher. So can we have another example, Matt? Uh, just, just, show, just to really <laughs> layer this rule in and also because I just enjoy doing it. Get this, <laughs> Quinns. I got Two nines. Two nines. Annie, you're going to play a pair that can beat two nines? Yeah, why not? I got two tens. Two tens. Oh, what if I played a bomb, which is four eights? Ah! Oh. Um, so a bomb is just four cards. And again, it doubles the bet. So we've gone from oh, 60p to one pound 20. Matt's going to be ruined. This is terrible. This and also we've got a landlord with guns and with bombs yeah. and, and uh, rockets. rockets. I'm seizing the means of kicking we, your ass. We need socialism quite badly. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's the idea. The only thing that can beat a bomb is a higher bomb, like I paid four eights here. If Matt somehow had four nines, well, that would be... I don't. Okay, <laughs> that would be really exciting. Um, and the only thing that could be even like the highest bomb, which is four twos, is again, a rocket. So the most exciting conceivable round of Fight the Landlord would be someone starting a set, someone playing a bomb, and then someone playing a rocket, and then the bet just tripled and... It's probably not gonna happen. It's probably but it might. Happen. And as soon as someone has emptied their hand, then the game is over, but you just play again. So if I managed to empty my hand there, we'd record uh, money that's changing hands. Everyone would put their hands back in the middle. You would shuffle the deck up again. Da, 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 da. Not forgetting to, of course, turn one card face up. And then you're good to go. Mm. I, I just even teaching this game makes me want to play it. It is an amazing game, although as with all of these games that we are teaching that involve gambling, if it's not fun when you're losing as well, then just don't do it. No, that's a sign that something's gone wrong. Thank you very much, everybody. We'll be back in another couple of weeks with another card game that doesn't suck. Thank you very much, guys.